Hi, uh, my name is Karolina Fedek. I'm a Polish LARPer, writer, and academic. I started LARPing in about 2006. Since then, so many things changed in our LARPs. There were so many fashions that came and went. We've been through different phases, from games which were entirely transparent to games that required secrecy. We've been through play to lose, play to win, play to lift, you name it. There were fashions for meta techniques, or lack thereof. There were different mechanics that either dazzled with complexity or amazed with their simplicity. But the greatest change that I observed since then had little to do with methodology of LARP creation. It had everything to do with our community. When we think about time, when we try to conceptualize time, we tend to make it circular. It's not physics, it's just psychology. We have no roadmap to the future, and because of this, we turn to the past to understand what might be coming. We try to prepare ourselves for the unknown by seeing how others in our past, how our ancestors coped with it. It might not be the best roadmap, but this is what we have, and our brains are more than happy to latch onto symmetries and similarities, making the differences all the more difficult to spot. The 20 teens and early 20s were mar marked by a disturbing sense of historical symmetry. They mirrored, in a way, the unrest, uncertainty, and aggression that we saw sprouting in the 20th century interbellum period. We saw similar movements of fascism, nationalism, and xenophobia arising. We saw the same struggles between classes in our societies. And ultimately, the world was hit with an illness that unlike the epidemics of 20th century, reached every corner of the globe and every demographic, not just marginalized groups and communities. Even those of us who wanted to look at away at this point couldn't. In the 2040s, the pandemic is a bad memory and so is the rise of fascism and nationalism. At this point, you may wonder, why do I bother to talk about this chapter of our history, one that we luckily closed, or what it has to do with LARP? I would like you to think about what happens after a LARP. This very moment when the game ends, you find yourself in a room of people whom you might not know, but you just shared an intense emotional experience and you're certainly not strangers anymore. While LARP is fiction, the emotions we experience during it are very much real. Maybe you and this person next to you, maybe you were mortal enemies, maybe you were loving siblings. Perhaps you were vulnerable in front of them both in and out of character. Perhaps you gave them a space in which they could experience cathartic emotions. You look at each other and this is where community begins. You discuss the LARP. You're not strangers anymore at all. You go back to your respective homes or countries and you may choose to decide to stay in touch. For this, we have all the tools of modern technology. We can talk and see each other despite and across borders. But those borders still impose upon us. We are shaped by our cultures, and while learning about one another can make us more compassionate or even wiser, those differences are also the places where the fabric of our community might fray. We somehow have to negotiate between celebrating our differences and learning to look past them at each other. And here's the thing, I'm an anarchist. I believe in radical responsibility for my own actions. To me, anarchism means studying institutionalized systems of oppression to understand my own privileges and marginalizations. And then in turn, overcoming them in my self-reflection, daily life, and ultimately, collective action. I'm very much shaped by my environment, as we all are, but at the same time, my cho choices are still mine. I want to own them. Anarchism means to me being responsible for my communities as well. And this includes my international LARP community, obviously. Within certain extent, I'm responsible for paying attention to points where my community might break. I owe it to my friends to try and understand them even as conflict arises. It is my job to explain where I'm coming from to the conversation, both literally and metaphorically. 
Of course, here as well, we need to navigate socioeconomic inequalities and systems of oppression. I'm absolutely not saying that the burden of education has to be on the marginalized groups. And I would really like to see more effort uh, from people in privileged positions to listen and learn. But this all boils down to being a community, being a balancing act, one that involves many people. And ultimately, I see it as a good thing. I see it as an opportunity rather than a factor that hinders us. But still, we break. We fail when external or internal tensions become too much. And we mend. There are places where we need to darn this fabric of our community. Darning creates a new weave in the fabric. It stands out, yes, but it marks the moments where we chose to learn to do better. I want to see about, see at our failings and improvements and be able to tell, yes, this is where we made a choice, a cautious decision to do better. When preparing for this talk, I looked for practical examples of mindful and responsible community building and community maintenance. There's been plenty written on the subject, but nothing could compare to how we stuck together during the 2020 pandemic and after that. We messaged and we called each other to make sure we were okay. And often those wellness checks led to other questions. We discussed our cultures and our inner lives. We became even less of strangers. And when we met to LARP again, our games reflected this. They became transformative like never before. We could experiment with new modes of storytelling and challenge ourselves. Granted, we also needed new stories for this new and scary time, that's true. But still, the biggest change happened on the small scale of interactions, communication, and establishing trust. LARP in itself isn't healing, but we found a way to heal through LARP as well. We took the time in the days of the pandemic to learn to communicate better, to listen better. We taught ourselves to assert our boundaries and voice our needs. And we remembered that lesson. This is not to say that in 2040 we avoid all conflicts. We still fight, and it still happens that someone tries to abuse and exploit our community and the weakest in it. We're not free of prejudice, but we've taken a radical step towards owning our actions. And it started with simple questions. Are you okay? Are you safe? Do you need to talk? And with not being afraid to answer, I need you to listen to me. Thank you for listening.